Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Live at Four on this Wednesday. Something's missing there. Yeah, we missed the open. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> We're just, Did you pay the here bill? Here we are. I, pay the bill. <laughs> yeah. I guess we forgot again. Anyway, cold. Perfect time for soup. Yes, that's right. Angie Horkin from the Wisconsin Beef Council is going to be here with some great soup and stew recipes for this January-like yeah, weather. I can't wait. Yeah. But first, here's what's making news on this Wednesday. A woman who was convicted of intoxicated homicide is facing a judge right now in Iowa County awaiting her sentencing. We'll hear from her. UW Hospital is taking measures to flush the hot water system after some patients come down with Legionnaire's disease. And the Secretaries of State and Defense brief the U.S. Senate on the murder of Saudi journalist J Jamal Khashoggi. Let's take a look outside today. Another cloudy and cold day, and maybe we're going to add a little to our snow tonight. Yeah, just a little bit. Not They're a whole bundled lot. up on campus. Yes, they sure are. You have to be this time of year. A quick dusting tonight, and Dave Caulfield is in the backyard weather patio. There he is, earmuffs on. Yes, uh, I, I can say my apartment needs more than a quick dusting tonight. That's uh, going to be a, a full vacuum situation later on. But as far as the weather goes, uh, yeah, a quick dusting of snow and kind of like being in a fun house and staring at a mirror in there. Sometimes looks can be deceiving when it comes to the weather. Doppler track showing this big mass of snow seemingly. Well, a lot of that is just not hitting the ground. We have dry air over us thanks to a quick stop of some high pressure. Pressure. So it's going to take the atmosphere at least the next few hours to dampen up a bit and allow that snow to start hitting the ground. Shouldn't be too much to worry about, but maybe a quick inch of snow by the time we get to tomorrow afternoon. Platteville, that snow not hitting the ground either on our Queen Bee Radio Skycam. Temperatures are in the upper 20s. Lucky spots have maybe hit 30, like Mineral Point, 24 in Monroe. But look at these dew points. They don't often show dew points in the winter, but when those temperatures and dew points are kind of far away from one another, that means the atmosphere is still pretty dry, especially close to the ground. So it's hard for those snowflakes to start sticking or even to start showing up for many of us. It needs it being the atmosphere needs a little bit more time. Madison on the WIC TV sky cam, those cloudy skies in place. The snow starts to affect us later on tonight with temperatures staying in the mid 20s. Now let's take a look at your first alert traffic update. Taking a live look at the Beltline and Verona Road. No major problems showing up there. We did have those traffic troubles earlier on this afternoon, but I think those have uh, gotten a little bit better, especially over the last few hours. No major accidents or incidents to report across Dane County, but we are starting to see those slowdowns pop up close to Verona Road and also uh, closer to Fish Hatchery. On Rimrock Road, we're still looking good, and for Stoughton Road and the interstate, no major problems showing up there. University Ave, Verona Road eastbound, that's a little bit slow. 10 minutes with an average speed of around 40 miles per hour. There still may be some delays in that neck of the woods, so keep that in mind. And some of the routes in and around Madison are looking good with speeds of 65 miles per hour, the Beltline to Janesville. And that's your first alert traffic. We'll talk a little bit more about this quick dusting of snow in your first alert forecast. Yeah, that was interesting because the radar looks a little ominous. Yeah, it looks right. like a big blue blob coming toward us. But you got to be really careful. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dave. First at four, a woman facing charges of homicide by intoxicated use of a motor vehicle last year appeared in Iowa County Court this afternoon. 53-year-old Kelly Johnsrud was arrested on suspicion of drunk driving three times in three days in October of last year. On her third OWI, Johnsrud allegedly hit another driver and killed him. The driver was 38-year-old Kevin Kaltenberg of Hillsboro, who was found dead at the scene. The Iowa County Sheriff said because the first two OWI arrest charges were still pending at the time. It was easy for her to continue driving. This afternoon, Johns Rood got emotional while being questioned, saying it's difficult for her to even remember that night or what happened. I have no explanation. It, I feel, and I don't even know how to say it, like, um, it was like not even, because I don't recall a lot, where it was like not even myself not remembering a lot of what I was doing. And you drank before you drove on October 6th? Yes, yes. Weren't you afraid you were going to get picked up again? No, I had no fear. I didn't feel anything. 
If Johns Root is convicted, she faces up to 40 years in prison and a $100,000 fine. The sentencing hearing is still ongoing and we'll bring you the latest tonight at 5 and 6. UW Hospital says their hot water system may put patients at risk for a type of pneumonia. Three former patients and one inpatient have developed Legionnaire's disease, a type of pneumonia. The hospital says it'll implement a hypochloric hyperchlorination process to flush all hot water lines in the building to eliminate any Legionnaire bacteria. The hospital has also notified affected patients and staff of the situation. The entire Senate heard from the secretaries of state and defense today a closed door briefing on the murder of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi and the Saudi led war in Yemen. Nicole Killian has the latest from the White House. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo was asked whether Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman had anything to do with the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul last month. I think I've read it all. There is no direct reporting connecting the Crown Prince to the order to murder Jamal Khashoggi. Secretary of Defense James Mattis doubled down following Wednesday's closed door Senate briefing. We have no smoking gun that the crown prince was involved, not the intelligence community or anyone else. But that statement contradicts the CIA's assessment that the Saudi crown prince would have at least known about the murder plot. The most persuasive presence in this uh, briefing was the empty chair, the chair that should have been occupied by Gina Haspel, the head of the Central Intelligence Agency. Haspel did not attend the briefing. Democrats called her absence a cover-up by the Trump administration. The signal that's being sent is a signal from the White House, from the president to authoritarians, that they can do whatever they want with impunity. The frustration came from both sides of the aisle. Anything that you need me for to get out of town, uh, I ain't doing it until we hear from the CIA. Maybe he did or maybe he didn't. President Trump continues to reinforce the U.S.'s long-standing alliance with Saudi Arabia, citing an arms deal that will bring cash and jobs to the U.S. economy. In Washington, Nicole Killian for WISC News 3. A CIA spokesman said the notion that anyone told Gina Haspel not to attend today's briefing is false. Democratic Party leaders took place today, elections that is, took place today on Capitol Hill, and Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi is poised to regain the Speaker's gavel. Pelosi staved off potential challengers from within her own party to win another term as the leader of the House. Democrats will also, the House Democrats it is, Pelosi also received her party's official nomination to become the next Speaker of the House. And rising Star Hakeem Jeffries was chosen to be the new Democratic caucus chair. I couldn't be more honored. That is a figure of speech, but is in fact in this case uh, as true as any statement anyone could ever make. Every single American deserves us here in the United States Congress to work Democrats and Republicans on their behalf to make their life better. Jeffries will become the fifth ranking House Democrat. The full House of Representatives will officially elect the next speaker in January when the new Congress begins. The Chinese scientist who claims to have helped make the world's first genetically edited babies says a second pregnancy may be underway. Hu Kui made his first public comments about the controversial, re controversial research at a summit in Hong Kong. In videos this week, he claimed to have successfully edited edited the genetic code of twin girls while they were embryos. He says he used the gene editing tool called CRISPR to delete a gene that makes people vulnerable to HIV. Jennifer Doudna is a co-inventor of the CRISPR gene editing tool and she watched him speak. I think we still need to understand the motivation for the study and what the process was for informed consent. The researcher is currently under investigation by his university, the Chinese government, and the hospital that he claims gave him ethical approval for the trial. He claims he paid for all of his patients' medical treatments himself. 
The Diocese of Madison is looking ahead in prayer after the loss of Bishop Robert Morlino. His funeral service will be held Tuesday at St. Maria Goretti Catholic Church in Madison. He passed away Saturday after an apparent heart attack. Eric Franke spoke with the church official today about the mourning process and how the diocese moves forward. Eric? Yeah, Mark and Susan, diocesan leadership now in mournful prayer following the unexpected passing of Bishop Morlino that happened over the weekend. And with the first Sunday of Advent this weekend, the diocese pays its respects and Monsignor Larry Bakke from St. Clair of Assisi Parish in Monroe who also directs the apostolate for the persons with disabilities on Channel 3 says even in the face of this difficulty the Christmas season is all about a message of hope which can help with this transition. We spoke with the Monsignor about this process and how Pope Francis will choose a successor to Bishop Morlino. So names are submitted like to the Archbishop Listecki in Milwaukee, and the names from him and others are submitted to the Papal Nuncio in Washington, D.C. He's the Vatican ambassador to the United States. Goes to a congregation at the Vatican, um, kind of like the, a cabinet position would be comparable to um, in our government, but they decide then names that they would submit to Pope Francis, who then personally makes that decision. Other than just being in prayer, do you give any thought to, um, you know, how a bishop might match with the diocese in terms of the makeup of the people here? Always a wonderment. Always a wonderment. I think somewhere along the line that there's some kind of a survey done within the diocese looking for that very, that kind of input in that. So not exactly sure about how that is or how that will be. And ultimately, it's entirely up to Pope Francis. Bishop Morlino was installed as the fourth bishop of Madison back in August of 2003, so he served 15 years. And while some would say he was a bit of a polarizing figure in the diocese because of his conservative viewpoints, others argue because of that traditional stance, he was the perfect fit for a place like Madison. Now, this process to replace him can take six to eight months or longer. Vicar General Monsignor James Bartillo will serve as administrator in the interim. Mark and Susan. All right, Eric Franke, live in the News Center. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Eric. Still to come, our unseasonably cold weather continues. Time for a hearty soup. That's what's on the menu here on Live at 4. Angie Horkin from the Wisconsin Beef Council has some hearty soup recipes for us when we come back.
Welcome back. President Trump is looking for ways to stop General Motors from slashing thousands of jobs. The president is upset about the announcement that GM is cutting 14,000 jobs and closing five plants. The president tweeted, we are now looking at cutting all GM subsidies, including for electric cars. GM stock started to drop almost simultaneously, as the president tweeted. The restructuring plan shifts GM's focus from sedans to more popular trucks and SUVs. That's where they're making money. They still have to make their trucks. They still have to make SUVs. That's the only thing people are buying. We'll see what the president does with auto tariffs, uh, which in theory would help GM, but the way global supply chains work, the auto industry, including U.S. automakers, really don't want to see it. President Trump tweeted that tariffs are the reason Americans buy trucks, tweeting if we did that with cars coming in, many more cars would be built here and GM would not be closing plants in Ohio, Michigan and Maryland. Federal Reserve Chair Jay Powell said in a speech today that interest rates probably won't go up anytime soon and that news sent stocks soaring. The Dow Industrials jumped 617 points closing at 25,366. The Nasdaq Composite Index added 208. The S&P 500 was up 61. Oh, and it feels like January and November, nothing hits the spot <laughs> like a hot bowl of soup. The Wisconsin Beef Council has some great soup recipes, and Angie Horkin is here today. Hi, Angie. Oh, Perfect oh, timing. Smells great. Yeah, it's and soup weather. It Even soup better, weather. you make them in one pot or in the crock pot, right? Exactly, yeah, and these two soups are kind of Faster soups are not like an all-day soup because I started with lean ground beef okay. in both of them. So it kind of speeds up the process so you can make them on a weeknight, which is nice. When you get home from work. So what do we great. have here? So this one's called Calypso Beef Soup, and I started with a pound of ground sirloin, and I browned that, and then I removed that from the pan, and then I sauteed a sweet potato and some yellow onion and red pepper. Well, let's put it in the bowl so and, everybody can see how colorful right. this is. And then after that, it takes about 15 minutes, and then you add a can of black-eyed peas, curry powder, which you're smelling, which is kind of that Calypso Caribbean flavor, and then um, a can of light coconut milk and some beef broth. Ooh. So the coconut milk is the cream in here. And then right before you're gonna see if um, I can, eat, can tilt this just so you can um, see. Add it. a couple big handfuls of fresh spinach and let that wilt in there. Okay, so just and a few minutes. Just a few minutes. I put it in right when I got here, so just wilt it up in the hot soup. So about 40 minutes, start to finish a uh, Calypso beef soup with some kind of different fun ingredients. Yeah, healthy um, ingredients too. Healthy ingredients and great flavor. And it doesn't take all day. And it doesn't, less than an hour. All right. So this recipe is an enchilada beef soup, and this makes a large batch. That's a lot. Batch. <laughs> just Let's throw put that it over one here. back here. There we go. So um, you start with two pounds of lean ground beef, and then you're going to add a lot of canned ingredients. So black beans, kidney beans, beef broth, Sounds sweet like corn. A chili. It is. And taco seasoning and then enchilada sauce, canned enchilada Ooh, sauce. Sounds a little spicy. So, and diced green chilies. <laughs> <laughs> it's really spicy. So I use mild enchilada sauce because that's what my family likes and then um, like a mild taco seasoning, but you can definitely make it spicier if you like and then top with some shredded cheese, sour cream, and then tortilla strips. And after you brown your ground beef, you brown that first, then you set it on high for two hours um, and in, it's in, in, the, in, the, in the crock pot. This is one that browns it, so I brown my beef in here and then I set it on high, two hours and it's done. Oh, that's perfect. And you can always moderate how spicy you make it, right? Definitely. Yeah. Ground beef, ground round, ground sirloin, what do you use? I use ground sirloin, but any ground beef would be fine. I like ground sirloin, ground round. In recipes like this, Plus fat. No, yeah, and then you don't have to drain it hardly, no fat at all. It saves some dirty dishes, saves some time, saves some steps. Yeah. So, but any ground beef will work. So beeftips.com is our website. Click right on As Seen on TV. And you'll find all our great soup recipes right there. Right there. Or um, we're on social media too, Facebook, Twitter. And you could Instagram. even you could even use like stew meat. Oh, definitely. Yeah, you could. Yeah, brown it up, use mm -hmm. that in here, and then it would simmer for two hours in the soup. Yes. I was looking very, at your website good. earlier today. You have some good stew recipes too on we there. We do. Yeah. We have a wild mushroom beef stew, yeah. which is one of my favorites. And uh, we have a whole soup stews and chili collection. <laughs> so if you click on recipes, we got them all together. I mean, you only got like four months to, for, <laughs> no, for, right. for soup weather. So right, better, we got some time better get now cracking. here to make soup for sure. <laughs> Angie's great recipes. Thanks for coming out today. Great to see you. Yes. All right. Well, coming up a little later, it's not the age that might cause driving problems in your later years. It is the medication that you might be taking. We'll take a look at that coming up after Dave's forecast.
Take a look at this. A check on traffic now. Drivers were forced to stop when a giant red-suited figure carrying a sack broke free from its mooring and blew onto the road in the UK. A traffic alert by the Automobile Association recorded slow traffic due to a large inflatable Santa. Better watch out, Santa's coming to town. <laughs> He sees you when you're sleeping, and he also <laughs> sees you when you're in traffic. That's so right. No saying mean things. That's right. It's Wednesday, November 28th. It is letter writing day. Put pen to paper, not an email. Yes. When's the last time you wrote a letter? Well, I always try to get my son to write thank you notes, to actually mm -hmm. write out thank you notes, because people don't do that Good anymore. I'll text them. No, 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 no. no, no. no. you got to write not a it thank out. You. Right. Yeah, you can't write LOL on a letter. <laughs> yeah. it, does, it doesn't look right. It also is Turkey Leftover Day. Do that today because tomorrow is throw out your leftover day. Yeah, it's well, going to be a week. It's, it'll be yeah. a week, it's right. Get a little dicey yeah. at that point. And it is National French Toast Day. Whether sprinkled with powdered sugar or loaded with butter and syrup, what's not to love about French toast? I love it. Sometimes I have French toast for dinner. I like to have breakfast for dinner. But here's an interesting thing. This dish was not invented in France. Oh, get out of here. Dave, take a guess. Where do you think? Oh, man, without reading the prompt <laughs> Put you on the uh, spot. I don't know, Germany, somewhere nearby. Uh, no, I, I guessed Canada, but it was actually 5th century Latin America. Well, Interesting. so close. For your trivi next trivia contest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're using up the old bread, the yeah. old steel bread. Yeah, interesting. I like it. I like so it's it. not going to warm up anytime soon? Uh, I don't think so, no. unfortunately. Maybe a little bit better by the weekend, but yeah. then we get some messy weather into town. But we'll talk about a quick dusting of snow on the way overnight, plus what to expect as we enter December in just a few days in your first alert forecast. Welcome back. Imagine being on this ferry right here, traveling to Dublin while wind and sea foam engulfed everything. Basically, as Storm Diana lashed the UK and Ireland waves and turbulent seas made for a very memorable trip, to say the least. The UK's weather service 
Forecast winds of up to 70 miles per hour and heavy rain, although advised these should calm down a little bit leading into tomorrow. That's good news. Our weather uh, pretty calm, definitely not anything like that, and we don't need to worry about any storm Dianas or anything of that caliber. However, a little light dusting of snow is on the way, kind of on opposite ends of the spectrum there. High temperatures today, they've been pretty chilly outside once again. 27 the high in Madison, 28 in Janesville, one of the luckier spots. Mineral Point made it to 30 degrees, and overall this month has been pretty, pretty, pretty chilly. Outside, another below average day yesterday, I think, as far as monthly temperature departures go, will be below average today and tomorrow as well. So far for the month, we are about five and a half degrees below where we should be, but still not really encroaching on any major temperature records for the month of November. We're now in 22nd place, so it could be worse, but it also could be a lot warmer this time of year. Doppler track, don't believe everything you read, folks, and sometimes the eyes can actually be a little bit deceiving because with this radar picture, it looks like a bunch of snow is heading our way. The trouble is this is really not hitting the ground just yet across southern Wisconsin and really all of Wisconsin in general. We'll zoom out so we can see kind of the extent of this weak wave of of low pressure moving in. It's kind of in the upper levels of the atmosphere and we've had some high pressure with us over the last day or so that has dried out the air and is making it difficult for that snow to really be seen. Um, especially close to where we all are, which is the Earth's surface. So snow depth already, some of us getting a whole lot of that from the last system. We could add to that in some spots, but not just yet. We're not seeing that snow yet into tonight, though. That becomes a little bit of a different story. Could have a few, just a few slick roads by the time we get to Thursday morning. Downtown Madison, the Edgewater Skycam, looking at those mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures right now are in the upper 20s and low 30s with a bit of a wind chill. It does feel like the teens in Madison and in Platteville. Still feeling like the 20s though across much of southwestern Wisconsin. Our snow chances go up tonight. Uh, we could be dealing with some light snow overnight, some periods of snow. The good news is doesn't look like that freezing drizzle threat is going to materialize across southern Wisconsin. So we can all take a sigh of relief in that respect, but a few flakes still may be hanging around, especially into tomorrow morning. For tonight, light snow showers developing, generally looking at less than an inch, so a pretty minor system on the way, but we'll pay attention to it. Nonetheless, temperatures falling into the mid 20s for tomorrow, mostly cloudy and cold after we get into tomorrow um, for the afternoon hours. I think it will be mostly cloudy. Again, some of those snow showers could hang on during the morning hours and we can see that on future tracks. So that snow developing as the atmosphere dampens up over the next few hours. So that snow may still be showing up on radar, but it's still going to take at least two or three hours for that snow to start to show up where we can see it with our own eyeballs. So as we head into tomorrow morning, some of that snow may be sticking around, maybe kind of a secondary uh, wave forming. Nothing really that we need to worry too much about. Again, a couple of slick roads possible just to start Thursday, so keep that in mind, especially on those untreated back roads. And on Thursday, we're looking at mostly dry conditions, mostly cloudy conditions sticking around, maybe a little bit warmer over the next couple of days with highs getting back into the 30s. I know we all appreciate that. Our snow potential looking at about a half an inch to at most an inch of snow from this, so not too much to worry about, which is good news because we are still keeping our eye on what's going to happen this weekend as we take a look at our seven day forecast. Saturday and Sunday, a mix of rain and snow is possible and even some freezing rain and sleet could be mixing in. Kind of a potpourri of precipitation, as I like to say. We'll definitely keep a close eye on that because temperatures are hovering right around that freezing mark for a lot of that period of time. And then we do start to quiet down on Monday. Some more snow showers possible on Tuesday. So hopefully this weekend doesn't get too messy to start December, but there is that threat. Anytime you talk about any type of freezing rain or oh, yeah, yeah, hovering around freezing there, it can be Dangerous. really, really tough. So we'll watch that closely. December 1st, right yeah. on two. Here we go. <laughs> All right, Dave, thank <laughs> Thanks, you. Dave. There's a new warning from AAA about senior citizens behind the wheel. They say taking multiple medications can be a prescription for danger on the road. Their findings are very concerning because we see that taking multiple medications can cause impairment in drivers that most are not aware of. 
AAA spokesperson Tamar Johnson says in a survey of 3,000 senior drivers, nearly 50% report using seven or more medications. Prescri prescriptions for heart conditions and the central nervous system are among the most common, including pain medication and anti-anxiety drugs. Side effects may increase the risk of a crash by up to 300%. We definitely worry about drugs that may cause you to be dizzy, may impact your sight, vi uh, blurry vision. AAA says older drivers are generally among the safest drivers. They're cautious and they wear their seatbelts, but the wrong mix of prescriptions can be a hazard on the road. What's older? <laughs> yeah. All right. I mean, I, that's, a, that's probably true for anybody. You have yeah, to be yeah. careful the medication you take. All right, still to come at four, window or aisle, what's your favorite airplane seat? What's yours? Aisle. Uh, me too. Uh, no, I like window. I don't know. I like, I like the aisle. So I can get up and go to the bathroom. <laughs> well, you may not have an option in the future. Oh, a look at windowless <laughs> airplanes. They may be around the corner, and we'll have more on that coming up next. The state capitol is pretty at this hour sure of the is. day, isn't perfect, it? Perfect timing. The sun is setting in downtown Madison. Well, window or aisle, what's your preference when you fly? Well, it turns out many passengers prefer flying in the window seat. But one day, planes might not have windows at all. Hillary Lane explains. The view from this Emirates flight may look normal, but these windows are an illusion. Zach Honeg from the pointsguy.com got to ride in the first class suite situated in the middle of the plane. Emirates wanted these passengers to have a view, 
so they created windows that are actually monitors. We've demonstrated that with uh, fiber optic uh, cameras relaying the image from the outside as if you were in the window seat. The quality of the, of the imagery is so good, it's better than with the natural eye. Emirates President Tim Clark says the technology opens up the possibility of building airplanes with no windows in the cabin at all. The aircraft are lighter, okay, the aircraft could fly faster, they'll burn far less fuel and fly higher. Offering seamless panoramic views. The British company Center for Process Innovation is developing a digital wallpaper that could project outside views. Information and in-flight services at your fingertips. Passengers could also choose their own view. We could see windowless planes maybe within 10 years. Simon Calder, travel editor for The Independent, says windowless planes could bring down the cost of flying. They're cheaper to make, they're structurally more coherent, and they reduce drag. We got a mixed reaction after showing the technology to passengers. I don't know if I like that. What do you think about an airplane without windows? I think it'd be pretty cool. That would be a little different, a little odd. <laughs> would it freak you out? A little bit? bit, yeah, I think so. While the windowless technology is only on select flights, it's not yet clear whether the idea will really take off. In New York, Hillary Lane for WISC News 3. What do you think? I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. A lot of, a lot of cruise ships, they have, in, for the inside cabins, they have monitors that look like a window, like oh, a portal. Oh, that's interesting. Outside, so so what, you, what you're seeing in the monitor, though, is actually a live picture. Yeah, they have, they have live cameras outside the plane. I don't know. It might be cool to check out. It's a little unsettling, though. I like the aisle better. <laughs> yeah. Still to come at four, is there a gadget lover on your Christmas list? When we come back, we'll find out what's hot this holiday season from the editors of the web CNET. That's when Live at Four continues.
Good afternoon. Here is your first alert traffic update. So we do have some updates on the Verona Road situation. Of course, crews continue to work on the traffic signals at Verona Road and Raymond Road, the intersection there. Repairs should be completed by about 7 p.m., but still the westbound and eastbound Beltline ramps to and from Verona Road are closed and also northbound Verona Road. Those lanes remain closed between McKee Road and the Beltline, but southbound Verona Road lanes open between Williamsburg Way and County BD. Also, we have uh, an accident that is just clearing up on the interstate. Uh, westbound, the right lane is blocked at exit 163. This is by Edgerton, so that's something to keep in mind. Other than that, no major accidents or incidents to report across Dane County. Traffic generally heading out at the posted speeds, but we're also still noticing those delays, especially on the westbound side, about 15 to 25 miles per hour. So a little bit slow out there, especially close to Verona Road. And that's your first alert traffic update. All right, Dave, thank you. An incredible sports moment caught on camera shows why you should never give up, even in table tennis. It happened during a match at the Trotheim Table Tennis Club in Norway after a fast show force after 15 year old Chris Chen to the floor. The fast shot got him to the floor, seemed all over. But then this happened. Boom. <gasps> Chen ended up losing the point to his opponent, but what he gained is legendary stardom. Table Tennis Daily labeled it the best shot of 2018. That is incredible. <laughs> wow. Never give up. Amazing. Well, it's hard to believe, but there are only 27 shopping days until Christmas. The consumer electronics website CNET has the hottest gifts in tech this holiday season, and we talked to editor Dan Ackerman about, about the most popular ideas for the tech lover on your list. I got to tell you, smart home stuff, pretty hot this year. Amazon has a new version of its Dot. That's its entry-level way to get into that Amazon Alexa ecosystem. And I, and I regret saying her name out loud because who knows how many <laughs> things I've set off at people's houses just by saying that. Uh, the new Dot uh, is usually $49. Holiday time, they get it down to about $29. So they want you to pick up one for every room of your house and uh, not just ask Alexa about the weather or to play music, but to control your smart light bulbs and your smart locks and your smart refrigerator and your, and your vacuum robot and uh, all that stuff. It's a little Jetsons-y, but I'll tell you, once I got the smart light bulbs, I don't know what I did before I talked to my light bulbs. I don't know what kind of life I was leading. I, I'm, with, I'm with you on that. All the lights go on and off in my house with yeah, Alexa. Yeah, you have one in almost every room, yeah, don't do. you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, that's what they're uh -huh. shooting for. All right. Let's, let, let's talk about uh, laptops. They're always very popular, and uh, you like the Apple MacBook Air. Tell us why. MacBook Air has been one of those super popular laptops for years and years. Everyone, every college student has it. You see it in every coffee shop, on airplanes. It's really a great student laptop and, and just the kind of thing you carry around every day. But it has not been updated in many years design-wise. It was getting a little long in the tooth. So I was excited that after six or seven years, Apple had a whole new design just a couple of weeks ago. And they did pretty much everything everybody asked for. It's thinner. It's lighter, more powerful. It has a much, much better screen. All that's great. Uh, the one catch, because there's always a catch, uh, it's a little bit more expensive now. It used to be $9.99, which was a great sort of college-level investment. would last you for four years. Now it's $11.99. I don't like that as much, but still a very good upgrade to the MacBook Air. All right, how about uh, gaming consoles? What's new there? Everyone is still very hot on the Nintendo Switch. That's this guy right here, and you can either play it on a tablet like this or plug this into your TV. I love it because it brings back the old concept of family gaming night. Uh, you can have four people playing at once on the same TV with four little controllers at the same time, playing Mario Kart, which is a racing game, or Mario Party. Um, and it brings back that concept that we used to have when we were kids, where you do stuff together at the same mm -hmm. time, and everyone's not just buried in their own screen. And if you want to go a little crazier, behind me, I have got a couple of these vintage arcade cabinets that a company called Arcade One Up is selling now. They each have a bunch of old classic games built in. The art looks fantastic. They're not as big as the real ones in the arcades, but they're pretty big. So you may want to get some extra room for it. But I got to tell you, I've never seen more people lined up to see something than when we took these out of the box. And you have to do a little assembly on the wood cases. But everybody wanted to come check these out. You got a robot? Robots, super hot right now. One of my favorites is this guy. It's the Anki Vector. Vector is his name. And he's, uh, he's small but powerful. He's a smart robot, which means that, uh, much like Alexa, you can ask him questions. You can ask him about the weather. He'll look up stuff online for you. He's got a camera. He'll take a picture of your face and recognize who you are. He'll store that information so he can recognize people through their faces. Uh, a little on the expensive side, 249 I don't think he's as smart as Alexa, but I'll tell you what. I gave 
gave this to a couple of seven and eight year olds last weekend. They could not get enough. They loved this guy running around, chasing him, <laughs> beeping at them, talking to them, kept him entertained for hours. That could be priceless. Yes, absolutely. Fasc Put a price on that. Fascinating and frightening <laughs> also. Um, and what about phones? You know, this is a great year to get a phone because everybody likes, you know, the iPhone 10 and the fancy uh, other phones, but they're $1,000 now. That's crazy. I think Apple figured that out because they have an iPhone 10R. Uh, it looks just like the iPhone 10, but I think the R must stand for, for regular people because it's <laughs> less expensive. It's $799, which is still a lot for a phone if you ask me, but it's less than $1,000. And my big uh, benchmark on this is that you can tell this is hitting with mainstream people because my mother went out and ordered one and just got it and is very happy. And if she goes and orders something online uh, and buys it, that's a that's a good mark for it. That's the test. Yeah. That's yeah. What else? What else from that's Amazon? That's the test. Yeah. That's the mainstream test. Yes, exactly. What else from Amazon? You, um, have? you know what? They have a new version of the Kindle, which of course is the book reader. You know, old-fashioned books still around, uh, although a lot of people like to read them on these now. This is the Kindle Paperwhite. It's been updated uh, just very, very recently with uh, waterproof design, a brighter, nicer screen with this uh, all-over front cover that looks really great. Uh, and it's still 129 which is not bad for something that can last for years and years. And if you want to get somebody a gift and they already have one, just get them some Kindle eBooks right on there. Very easy to do. Well, you have a printer to round things out. I thought years ago that 3D printing uh, would take over the world. I was completely wrong, and nobody has a 3D printer. Uh, they were too hard to use, too expensive, too finicky. This year, I finally found one that's actually pretty easy to use and not that expensive. I, I got the Monoprice Voxel, which is $3.99, but I gotta tell you, I was printing stuff within an hour of taking it out of the box. And now I'm the most popular guy in the office because I can print stuff like this, like Cool Millennium <laughs> Falcon. And everyone everyone I work with is getting a set of little Pokemon figures for their kids as stocking stuffers. Uh, I'm just printing these by the dozen. Even the uh, Nintendo Switch I showed you, I had it on this little stand that I, that I printed that folds down. Uh, uh, it's a super fun hobby. I think it's great to do with kids because they see how stuff gets designed in 3D and sent to the printer and built and knitted together, and they get to be part of that whole process. It's got a great STEM, you know, science element to it. Well, maybe the 3D printer will catch on now. That's your, <laughs> yeah. your endorsement, Dan. <laughs> Lots of great ideas. Thanks for joining us. Happy holidays to you. Great to see you, Dan. Thanks so much. You too, guys. See anything you like? <laughs> Great suggestions. All of them, are, they were pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. You, you make the Millennium Falcon. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty the good. For stocking stuff. Great ideas, Dan. Yeah. Thank you. We'll be right back with a final check of your forecast.
little snow, not a huge travel problem tomorrow, but make some extra time. Yeah, especially during the early morning hours, there may be some slick spots on untreated roads. Most of this snow right now is not hitting the ground, but we have noticed maybe a little bit of heavier banding across southwestern Wisconsin, so it's tough to tell right now in Platteville if that's just some fog, if that is some light snow falling, but we'll watch over the next few hours for that snow to start falling more more of a coverage across southern Wisconsin. Tonight, those snow showers moving through. Less than an inch of snow generally with temperatures in the 20s and for tomorrow, that snow moves out in the morning and we're looking at temperatures back in the 30s with most of cloudy skies. So it's going to melt. Yes, pretty quickly. <laughs> All right, Dave, thank you. Thanks, Dave. Tomorrow here on Live Before, we'll find out what's happening in the 608 this weekend. Emmy Fink will join us. And tomorrow, uh, World AIDS Day is next week. UW Health has a preview with its annual AIDS Day community gathering. We'll have a preview of that coming up tomorrow at 4. In today's Final Touch, we have just solved all of your Christmas shopping needs. <laughs> Big Mouth Billy Bass is back on the market, <laughs> and this time he has an assistant. Alexa, let's play a game. 